Hi, and welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Aaron Skinner, and I'm going to be talking about considerations when it comes to choosing an airbrush. First and foremost, the thing that divides most airbrushes is single versus double action. So what do we mean by those terms? Well, on a single action airbrush, the button only goes in one direction, that's down. That opens airflow, the air flows out of the brush and across the tip of the nozzle here, and that's what pulls paint up out of the reservoir. It mixes and then sprays forward. You can adjust paint flow with this dial here on the nozzle cap, and that will adjust how much paint is actually flowing out of the needle. On a double action airbrush, the button goes in two directions. You push down to open the airflow. The same as with the single action, there's a little bit of play here, so you have some control over how much air is actually moving. And then you pull the trigger back, and that moves the needle through the nozzle, and that affects the airflow. The further back you go, the larger the paint pattern. That gives you some control as you're painting with the size of the pattern, so you can do different effects on the fly as opposed to the single action airbrush, which the, you have to kind of stop painting, adjust the nozzle, start painting again, stop, adjust the nozzle, and so forth. This just gives you a little bit more control during your painting sessions than the single action. The second consideration is external versus internal mix, which is a description of where paint and air mix with your brush. Now on double action airbrushes, they are by their very nature all going to be internal mix. That means that air comes up through the body of the brush, paint comes out of the reservoir, and they are mixing inside the air cap and then spraying out through the front of the brush. With single action airbrushes, you can find choices between external and internal mix. With an external mix brush, you have paint coming up out of the reservoir through this needle and nozzle combination. The air is flowing through the body of the brush and it's the airflow over the tip of the needle and nozzle that is drawing the paint into the air and they're mixing at the outside this tip of the brush here. Now the advantage of this kind of brush is that some people consider them easier to clean. I'm not sure that I entirely agree because you still need to disassemble this needle nozzle combination and make sure you get all the paint out of it. But what you don't have is paint getting into the body of the brush, potentially getting past the packing or O-ring that seals the, the internal part of the brush around the needle, and it can affect the valve here, sticking it open, or solvents can damage the packing, you get all kinds of things going wrong. And in some cases, well, Tim Kidwell, for example, had a brush damaged permanently by that happening. The third consideration is the location of the paint reservoir, or what we refer to as feed types. There's a gravity feed, a siphon feed, and side feed. On a gravity feed brush like this Iwata, you can actually look down into the reservoir and see the needle at the bottom. This one's a top mount of gravity feed, and it is that means that paint is actually flowing directly in there and gravity is helping move it. In practice, that generally means that you can get away with spraying at lower pressures because you don't need air to help move paint into the body of the brush. Whereas on a siphon feed, because the uh, reservoir is mounted below the brush, it is all about air traveling over the needle and nozzle that is pulling paint out of that reservoir. That means generally you need a higher pressure. The advantage of the siphon feed though is that you can have a larger bottle, which means if you are spraying a lot of paint, you don't have to change out or refill your reservoir nearly as often as you might have to do with this gravity feed. Side feed brushes kind of give you the best of both worlds because you can fit them with a gravity cup like this one is. It's mounted from the side or you can mount a bottle below it and turn it into a siphon feed brush. The advantage with the side feed besides that versatility is that your sight line is not obscured by the cup as it would be with this gravity feed. So I can see exactly where this nozzle is pointing and I know exactly where paint is going to be hitting the model. The fourth consideration is the style of trigger. Traditionally airbrushes have had a top mounted button and you uh, hold it a little bit like a pencil and you use your index finger to depress and manipulate the button. Now the disadvantage for this is that some people find it a little less intuitive and it can be a bit 
like if you're doing a long painting session and you're doing a lot of squeezing and fine movements, it can get, you can cramp your hand. That's why a lot of people prefer the pistol grip, which is a little bit more intuitive as to how you hold it. And you use, again, your index finger, but this time you're pulling back on this trigger and the first part of the pull opens airflow and then the second part is what moves the needle. That's really great for long painting sessions. It's less likely to have your hand cramping. What I don't like about the pistol grip and why I tend to use the traditional airbrush more often is that I don't have fine control over the airflow that I do with the top mount because this first part is opening the airflow. And once it's open, it's open all the way once you start moving the needle. So I prefer my traditional brush. But if you uh, are more comfortable with the pistol grip, and I know a lot of people are, go ahead and choose that. The final consideration, and this one's a little bit more fluid because it can be changed out, is your needle and nozzle size. Most general purpose airbrushes, like the Iwata Eclipse that I use most of the time, have a 0.3 millimeter needle and nozzle combination. You can get smaller ones down to like a 0.2 millimeter or a 0.18 millimeter, which is really good for detail work, or larger ones up to like a 0.5 millimeter that are better for wide patterns, big general area spraying. Um, the, the thing about airbrushes like the Iwata is that you can get replacement no needles and nozzles of different sizes so I can make this brush more versatile by changing out those things. The important thing to remember if you do that is you have to change the needle and nozzle together because the nozzle is fitted for the needle. If you use the wrong needle in the nozzle, you can either get paint that doesn't spray evenly, or in the worst case, a too large needle can split this very fine metal at the tip of the nozzle, and that will cause uneven spraying. It can cause paint to leak out and spatter while you're spraying. Just things you don't want, things that are going to ruin your nice, smooth paint jobs. The final consideration when it comes to choosing an airbrush is going to be the price. We all have a budget we have to live with, so we can't all go out and buy that $500 zip bang airbrush from the best manufacturers. You have to live within your budget and buy something you can afford. That said, you can get good airbrushes for between $40 and $100, $150 that will suit most of your needs and last forever if you look after them. This Aztec brush is plastic. They no longer make these, that these were sold for a long time as a good multiple range versatile brush. And we know people who are still using these who have won national awards. There's a guy in the building who is still using one for all of his painting work. The Pache H, this is a $60 airbrush. Simple single action external mix brush. We have a couple of reviewers who are still using brushes that they bought more than 50 years ago. Pache H's, and they are turning out really nice models with them. This particular one belongs to Model Railroader Senior Editor Cody Grivno, and he does amazing work with this particular brush. Here at the magazine, we use Iwata mid-range brushes. We have a couple of Neos and Iwata Eclipses. My personal favorite are the Iwata Eclipses. I use them for almost everything I do because I've gotten to know them, and when I pick it up, it's almost like an extension of my hand. I know the idiosyncrasies of the brush, which brings me to the greatest advice I can give anybody who asks about choosing a brush is settle on the brush that you want, that has the features that you like and is in your price range, and then practice with that brush. Get to know that brush so that you can pick it up and use it and get consistent results every time.